greetings and praise the Lord Jesus. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Karibuni sana. Today's show, we have a um, wonderful guest with us, uh, Madam Julian. So she will be introducing herself. And this is very informative, both for ladies and the society at large. So kindly listen keenly. Na itakusaidia na pia utasaidia mtu ambaye unaweza patana naye na kona uhitaji wa namna hii au nyingine. So karibu sana Julian. Thank you. Yes, um you can introduce yourself, mm-hmm. tuambie wewe ni nani, mm-hmm. umetoka wapi? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, um I'm Julian Peter. Uh I come from Machakos County. Mm-hmm. A place called Ndidine, Idanga. And um I call I say I am the MRKH queen mm-hmm. and uh, what I mean by MRKH is that um I was born with a condition that is called uh, Mayer Rokitansky Kuster Ausa syndrome in its abbreviation oh. that is MRKH uh, or you can simply call it uh, Morerian agenesis Morerian agenesis yes. uh, yeah so Hey, yo, yo in full at a moment to get to the <laughs> short form. Uh, M, uh, MRKH. Yes. So what is the condition about? Mm-hmm. Uh, how would someone, what does it mean if someone has that condition? Okay, Um, MRKH is a condition um, whereby a female baby is born without uh, some of the uh, reproductive organs mm-hmm. or underdeveloped. Mostly type 1 is where by now they have underdeveloped uh, reproductive organs. Mm-hmm. And now we have MRKH type 2 whereby now the reproductive organs are completely not there, completely without the uterus, mm-hmm. without the cervix, uh, without the vaginal canal, mm-hmm. and sometimes it affects now the renal system, whereby it affects now the kidneys. And mm-hmm. in other cases, or let's say severe cases, it can affect now the skeletal system. Oh. Yes. So mm-hmm. mine was now MRKH type 2, and also in type 2, we have now the issue with the kidneys, mm-hmm. whereby we fi- you find out that that you have now uh, a U-shaped kind of kidney, which we call uh, the the osseous kidney, and um, that is now where now I lie. So I am in now MRKH type two. So mm. my organs did not develop. Did not develop. Yes. Completely. Wow. Um. This is informative, mm-hmm. as I said, okay. and. Um, did you? I, I can imagine you didn't know about the condition mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. being diagnosed. Yes. Um. So when mm-hmm. did you come to learn mm-hmm. that there's this condition mm-hmm. and you have it? Okay, I learned at the age of seventeen, and uh, I went to the hospital. So I had issues with my feet, so I went to be treated for the feet. And that is the point where by now the doctor asks, "When was your last period?" And uh, I believe so many uh, MRKHs have issues with now going to the doctor and having to say, I don't have periods. Mm-hmm. They, so they might lie and say that um, mm-hmm. I, last two, two weeks, two weeks ago, or even a month, eh, mm-hmm. because they don't want to go into details or even explain about it. So mm-hmm. sometimes... Um, that is what happens. The doctor asks me, uh, when was your last period? And I told him I have not had my periods. Mm. So he was like, at the age of 17, yeah. you should be having your periods. Yeah. But then again, I wasn't worried because uh, when I asked uh, when I asked why I did not have my periods, mm. uh, I was told I might be a late bloomer. So I thought mm. they still, yeah, they they still, still come. Time. So it never worried me. Mm. So I kept waiting. And I remember my mother buying me uh, pads. Mm-hmm. She bought it just in, just case, in case they it come. So yeah. at least I have the pads. I remember keeping them until they turned white. Mm. Yes. It changed the color because I did not use it at the same time. Mm. And I also did not give it away. Yeah. So I just, at, uh, when it turned white, I threw it away. Mm. So after that, when, the doc- when I told the doctor I have not had my periods, so he did a physical checkup mm-hmm. and he said, I don't have now the vaginal canal and it might be closed from the outside. So okay. I went for the scan. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and the first scan I think maybe they gave me the wrong scan or something just happened mm. because the first scan revealed that my reproductive organs were very okay, oh, okay. and now the vaginal canal was closed from the outside. So I was booked in for a minor surgery like the doctor said because mm. he said that uh, he was just supposed to just open the vaginal yeah. canal because mm. it's just closed from the outside so mm. that's why it was called a minor a minor surgery so I went in for the surgery mm. and after I think maybe when he was doing the surgery something just happened or maybe he noticed something mm. wasn't right so um I, I went, when I went back to the ward, what he did is um, he sent me for the second scan. Before the mm-hmm. second scan, mm-hmm. did the minor surgery take place? Yes, it happened. It did? Yes. But, but they didn't give you the results, Ama, explain? No, they did not explain. What happened is, mm-hmm. he, okay, because he was just supposed to open. Mm-hmm. So when he went in, he just cut the car. The, 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 the whatever he thought was the vagina or canal eh, mm. just to open it eh? so um when he sent me to the ward what mm. happened he told me now i need to go for the second scan, the second scan mm. to confirm if the vagina or canal was opened okay mm. i don't th- i don't know if it was true Ama, he was just Ama, trying to just, convince yeah, me yeah. to go for the second one so i mm. went for the second one and the second one stated that um, now the reproductive organs are, are not, not there. there yes so um the doctor also wanted to reconfirm if what the second scan is saying it's is true, true yeah. so i was sending for that scan so I went for the third scan and uh, it confirmed that now I had now Moravian agenesis and uh, my kidney was also one or it was a UV, uh, U-shaped kind of uh, kidney. Yeah? So mm. that means I have one. Mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As a result of the condition. Yeah. So from there, mm-hmm. um, did the doctor kind of explain mm-hmm the entire the entire details mm-hmm. of the condition mm-hmm. and this is how mm-hmm. it would affect mm-hmm. you and mm-hmm. so on i think i think we have uh, funny doctors he yeah. did not explain anything and if he, if he did he did not explain it to me maybe he explained it to my mother yes. yeah because yeah okay i was okay. still young by the end of the day yeah, yeah so maybe he explained it to my mother but to me he did not Okay. Yes, I just read the results along oh. the way. And then you went Google. <laughs> no, I, I lied. That is why I am 17. I want, in fact, I want to go back to school. So I'm telling him, where? Can you release me? I want to go oh, back. Oh, yeah, school. like this uh, genesis. Yes, I yes, don't know yes. what a genesis mm-hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. So I read <laughs> the results. And at least because I had, uh, I was studying biology, mm-hmm. at least I had a little information mm-hmm. that this is what a reproductive uh, system should, should look, look like. like yeah. And what he say, if he's saying I don't have this, this and that, this is what it should be so i remember crying for like three days and then i was like i need to go back to school so i remembered i'm supposed to be in school Mm. so um i think i swept the story under the carpet just to continue with my education Mm. so i went back to school and continued with school because i remember even after that he sent us to kenyatta for an mri Mm -hmm. yes so we went to kenyatta before i went back to school we did the mri and uh, it is still confirmed what the mm. scans were saying. Mm. But at that time, I did not know. Because when you do now the MRI, you you were supposed to wait and come back after for some it, time uh, for it. Eh? Mm. So I left, went back to school, and my mother was supposed to go for the results. Mm. So I remember telling her, if the results say I need surgery, I will not go. I remember telling her, because I remember the surgery, I felt so much pain. Mm. Mm when I, I when I had the first surgery. Yeah. So I did not imagine myself again going through the same the pain. Same. So I told her I won't go for the surgery again. Mm. And I guess maybe that's why she never even told me about the right. results for Kenyatta. Yeah. Because I remember going back, uh did my exams for form three and went to form four, cleared high school. My mother has not told me about the results from Kenyatta. But by then I didn't remember they are still reading the same thing. So mm. I guess maybe she's decided she doesn't uh, even know yeah, how to yeah, approach yeah. Yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And babe, because I still already know what yeah. is happening. Yeah. So um, after high school, I remember after high school, that's when now life 
it's back and then you're like by the way I was diagon I had I have something I am different and I tried to uh, at least find myself mm-hmm. I also tried to um I also thought maybe just some day mm-hmm. I'll just wake up and this will just be a bad dream just like that and, and pop, it is gone and, yeah. so um I remember coming and I uh, coming to to visit my mother and uh, I decided let me just do cleaning around and in the process of my cleaning I find the <laughs> I find the big envelope yes, you can imagine the big out. envelope from Kenyatta Hospital oh, eh? so I, I picked it and uh, I removed everything inside have my re- I read everything and returned it where it was I never told my mother I've seen it right mm. I just read for myself understood it and returned. I, mm. uh, in fact, to date, I don't even know where it is. The 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 key the big, key big. <laughs> yeah, the key envelope. Eh? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know where it went to. I mm. think maybe she just decided to dispose it or something. Mm. But the results, I do have them. I remember I saw them later on. She just kept them in like a small now key envelope. Mm. So you can tell it is a report from Kenyatta, but you don't have now the the, uh, the, the MRI whatever. Mm. Mm. So um, so that's how I found out now. After high school, mm. now mm. I started doing my research. So after high school is when now I start doing my research, okay. and when I am yeah. doing my research, I'm also thinking, eh, um, maybe uh, people say God is a God of miracles. So you can just just go to church and yeah, maybe pray about get it, and then for. get to, not even get. To, I've, I've never, I have never, I never done. <laughs> I have never gone for prayers. For. No, no, no. I prayed for myself. <laughs> I prayed for myself. Uh, so I would go to church, like pray, and maybe just hope. Just somehow, yeah, I I'll have a baby. My true. issue was not even having the the organs. No, I just my my, pro- my problem was just having the babies, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I just hoped, like, just like a miracle somehow it mm. will happen. Eh? Mm. Uh, but that time I met somebody I would speak to. Mm. Uh, he's a friend to date. He's been, uh, we have been friends for the last 10 years. Wow. So I would open up to him. Mm. And without judgment, he will try to help me at least uh, accept my condition at that oh, point in yeah. time. Yeah. So at least I would call him. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to him, he would call me, we would talk, and that really helped me to accept the condition. Mm-hmm. Because remember at this point in time I'm fighting myself I'm yeah. I'm fighting myself and my demons. So we are fighting and trying to find out that what 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 if what if God just does a miracle and I'm pop, I have my baby and I'm not even worried about Mm-hmm. and uh, I don't even have a vagina or canal or what. I'm just there and praying that one day I'll just have a baby somehow. Mm-hmm. Somehow. God, I'm going to find a new Jesus. Mm-hmm. But um, over time, I came, I understood, I, I, I decided to be, to, to at least do my research, also be able to understand this condition. And um, I got so many, info, so much information, and I discovered that there's so, so many people out there with their marriage. Yeah. So, um, but this time I'm still continuing uh, with my my way of trying to accept yeah. and also embrace the condition that I have. Okay. And um, by the time I was finding somebody who has a marriage like me, I had already accepted my faith okay. because I also decided to choose to be that miracle I was waiting for. So um, wow. I usually tell people I am that miracle everybody is telling me about because at some point people think I don't believe in God because they are saying mm-hmm. I should uh, God is a God of miracles eh? yeah. and I should believe somehow it will, it will just happen. So they think it's yes. because you're not believing in that yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. happening. Yes. So I've wow. chosen to be that miracle that everybody is looking for. Mm. Yes. And then I remember somebody telling me in heaven there is spare parts for every part. Eh? So uh, somehow, somehow God should just send it to me and then it will land on me somehow. Yeah. Yes. But... um. It doesn't bother me what everybody else is thinking. It is just, it is always about me. 
yeah how do i feel about it because i need to have accepted that fact that this has really happened or this is really happening yeah this is not going to happen yeah and then i no. enjoy, i live my life yeah yes so that is what i have chosen to do wow yes. i think uh, you've mentioned something mm-hmm. beautiful and sometimes we think that when even sometimes maisha tu inakuchafa yeah true and people think mm-hmm. that you're going through a hard time yeah, because yeah, yeah. you don't believe in god yeah, true, true. or because you've sinned or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. Uh, but really as you're saying mm-hmm. some situations are there mm-hmm. for a purpose true. and it's not that we don't have faith in god yes yeah uh so in i would want to ask mm-hmm. do you feel like mm-hmm. if you are able to have a discussion mm-hmm. with mom mm-hmm. um and go through the journey mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. that it would have been easier mm-hmm. for you to deal with the situation mm-hmm. uh, what is the importance mm-hmm. of having a support system mm-hmm. when it comes to mm-hmm. um people with mm-hmm. uh, mrkh okay uh first and foremost i would say um i believe as a parent as a patient you have a deliberate journey to walk mm-hmm. as much as i would have loved my mother to be there she also had a journey to walk True. at the same time yeah so i believe she might not have understood my point from a view because she's a parent mm. remember she she is not the person who doesn't have this organs or mm. this reproductive mm. system. So she has her own journey as well to go. So as much as um we had our own way of working our journeys, mm. sometimes it is also good to talk about it. Mm. So we might not you might not we might not at least have a solution to this, yeah. but at least we can speak about it together. Mm. But I also say Uh, the fact that i walked it alone it allowed me to be me not because this is what the other person feels mm. i should do i did whatever i did because mm. i wanted to do and because it was for me but sometimes as a young people we might take it wrongly we might forget that the parent as a journey as well yeah, that they've also been yes, hit hard by yes, this news yes because at some point a parent might feel mm. maybe there's something i did wrong mm-hmm. maybe there's something that i did not do maybe i should have written something maybe because yeah. i did not do this mm, maybe it is why is now i get i got a daughter like this one mm, you get mm. and so that is their own, they have their own journey as well mm. so as much as um you might feel like uh maybe the parents should always be there they also have their own journey mm. to go through actually mm-hmm. someone uh, said that mm-hmm. sometimes when we think about our parents mm-hmm. we you think of your mom as mom mm-hmm. but you never think of them as a person as a person yeah right? they, by the end of the day they this are, person they have person. their own life yes. to live they also have their emotions yes. they have their feelings yeah. and we all handle things differently, differently. yes yeah mm. so we can be gracious to our parents if you are there and you're bitter about something with your parents you can see them as a person and understand that they also had um some issues to deal with mm-hmm. so um mm-hmm. if today i found out mm-hmm. that i have um mm-hmm. mrkh mm-hmm. uh what's are there medical procedures mm-hmm. or um health care procedures mm-hmm. that i can go through mm-hmm. uh for um a quote and quote mm-hmm. uh better or no more life mm-hmm. saying quote and quote because mm-hmm. life is life mm-hmm. whatever okay I, i i also want to state something yeah? what yeah. you call no more is not no more to me uh, yes yeah, so this is different. the only normal that i know and this is the only normal that i can uh, understand the same same way your no more is what you understand yeah so uh, this is my normal and uh, when you find out you have a marriage we all have mixed reactions because you don't know 
sometimes you also don't understand if the doctor is sure of what he's saying yeah. and you also feel like I want to reconfirm mm-hmm. I want to go and see somebody else can I just visit another doctor yeah. maybe this one doesn't understand what he or she is See. saying it is okay to feel that way yeah. it is okay to seek another option mm. it is okay to cry at the same time yeah so cry as much as you want yeah. but always remember there is more to life than what we know because I'm a what we have learned from the society mm. because we have been trained by the society that if are uh, if you, you you give birth your child is supposed to grow up go to school they're supposed to yeah to, to crawl yeah. at a certain mm-hmm. age walk mm-hmm. at a certain mm-hmm. age go to blah. school yeah. after school you are supposed to go to uh, to, to get jo- work get yeah, married get at a, married, sat- yeah. a certain age at 25 that is when they're like <laughs> when you ole you get eh? and yeah. um, that is the society that we have been into mm-hmm. and when you get married we expect after one year you are supposed to be having a kid mm-hmm. if you don't have you have a problem yeah. you get eh? mm-hmm. but then again that is the expectation of the society so we expect when you get married you have kids your kids have kids Yeah, and the cycle continue. continues yeah. but then again there are also things that we need to consider i might have a problem i might not also at the same time want kids yeah. it's not everybody that is born to give birth it's not everybody that is okay with having kids actually i think the problem mm-hmm. is uh, <laughs> that everybody mm-hmm. is having kids even before they prepare mm-hmm. to be parents yes because even mm-hmm. parenting in itself mm-hmm. is is a calling mm-hmm. and you need you need to prepare and mm-hmm. know how will i raise my kids mm-hmm. how will i be there for them mm-hmm. and so when everyone is just Mm-hmm. getting kids mm-hmm. that's why we even have children who mm-hmm. feel um they are left mm-hmm. or, or something like mm-hmm. that so not everyone should mm-hmm. be having kids uh, no, not everyone is ready to have kids yeah. so um yeah. as long as you're not ready it is not it's necessary good. yeah yes yeah. there's more to life mm. than kids sure yes because um the reason as to why people are having kids without maybe uh, even preparing to be parents is because sometimes mm. the society has trained us at this age you should be having kids yeah. why you n- you were never taught how to be a parent mm. you are never given that opportunity even to uh, just be you Yeah. You're just supposed to be what the society Society expects you to be. Yeah. So we need to be able to be given that opportunity. I need to be me. I need to be allowed to express my feelings, Mm -hmm. do what I want to do, Mm -hmm. or as long as I'm not doing the wrong thing. Yeah. But let me be me. Yeah. Because we forget we are all different sure yes sure. as much as you are mother mm. i might not want to be a mother mm. yes mm. so um you are considering mm-hmm. the medical mm-hmm. procedures mm-hmm. um that a person with mrk mm-hmm. mm-hmm. can can go through okay. we have different uh we ha- first of all I, i usually say before you even go for a medical procedure because any pre- medical procedure you're going to go for most likely surgeries mm-hmm. and we have a uh, people who are with MRK who are not able, they did not uh, develop their breast mm-hmm. so we have also treatments for that eh? and mm-hmm. mostly you find out their implants which is also a surgery yeah. but as much as you want to go for this surgery are you ready psychologically mm-hmm. it is important that when you are doing these surgeries you are ready you you have accepted your condition at this point in time mm-hmm. and when you're going there you are at least prepared mm. because you need to be, be prepared mentally yeah physically and emotionally mm. otherwise you're going to be drained because remember the fact you're going for these procedures why are you going for them because because, you have, because you have the con- so it is a reminder that you're going for these surgeries mm. because you have such a condition yeah because this condition led you there Yeah. So have you accepted the fact that you have this condition? Mm. So you need to prepare yourself. Don't just wake up because you have just found out you have MRKH and then like 
let me just do the surgery. I also advise if you have just found out that you have MRKH, heal first. See a psychologist if you must. Yeah. That way you prepare now for the treatment. Mm. You prepare for the surgeries, mm -hmm. but don't just do it. Because you find out that some doctors will be like, do the surgery. You get it? Yeah. But this doctor has not even prepared, prepared you for the surgery. You. They're yeah. just doing it just because maybe mm. of the money. Mm. Yeah. They don't okay. also think about the repercussion. They don't even care how you feel. Mm. Because it is important that my doctor gives me that opportunity to say yes. I want this surgery. Mm. As much as you have given me the options, yeah. also try and allow me to feel like True. I really need this surgery. Because not also not everybody needs the surgery. Yeah. Because you find out that somebody, um, uh, someone who has um, a three quarter of the vaginal canal developed, they will not need the surgery. So we have different mm. treatments. You, we have someone who will need surgery and we have someone who will need what we call dilation, a treatment procedure to uh, create um, to create now the vaginal canal instead of now doing the, the surgery. Mm. So it will depend. It differs from one person, from to, one another, person to, to another. another. Yes. Um, as we almost... Uh, Wind up. I would want us to touch on mm -hmm. uh, AMRKH Queen, mm -hmm. and they are, I know it's an intimate and uh, very personal space. Mm -hmm. uh, but just can an MRKH uh, mm -hmm. Queen, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy mm -hmm. um, a, a, an active sex, sexual life mm -hmm. and uh, you know enjoy partnership with oh. the opposite sex? Okay. Um... What happens with MR, MRKH does not uh, mostly affect you, you, your feelings as a woman. Yeah. And uh, just like any other normal woman, mm -hmm. you have your feelings. Yeah. And uh, yes, MRKH, partner, MRKH uh, queens can have partners, mm -hmm. that is sexual partners, mm -hmm. and can be able to enjoy um, sexual uh, life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it also differs from one person to another, yeah. just like any other normal woman, yeah. like you call them, yeah. because uh, this is my normal. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but now what happens is, eh, there, there, we have now MRKHs who cannot um, have penetrative sex mm -hmm. because they were born now without the vaginal canal. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that will need to have the surgery. Okay. When I did my first, um, uh, that it was the minor surgery, as the doctor called it, yeah. I did it in the year 2008. Mm -hmm. I was 17, and I wish they never did it because I, I wasn't ready, and also I did not understand what, was what this wa was happening. Yeah. So, um, so I, I really waited and uh, I did it, I did the, now the second surgery 10 years later, meaning I did my surgery in 2018. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I went for the surgery and I uh, was fortunate enough, I had, I had my surgery in Arusha, Tanzania, mm -hmm. and I was ready personally, I was ready uh, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, and emotionally at the same time mm -hmm. because I had made peace with MRKH. Yeah. I had embraced it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really helped me to journey through the surgery, mm -hmm. to journey through the healing process, so yeah. it did not drain me. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happens when you have your surgery, because the surgery, we had, I had surgery, and uh, I stayed in the hospital for 24 days after surgery. So mm -hmm. what happens, uh, the 24 days, what happens in the 24 days, what you do is, there is, uh, there is other procedures they do immediately, after, uh, not immediately, every four days after the surgery. Mm -hmm. So after surgery, four days, you go back to theater for cleaning and something we call packing. Packing. Packing, there is something that is inserted in the vagina to keep it open. Remember, it's a wound whereby it can go back and and close up. Close up. Eh? Mm. So what happens, there is that, there, there is what now we, they call parking mm -hmm. so and unpacking unpacking is removing the previous one and parking now is now replacing it with a new one eh? mm -hmm. so they clean the wound and also place another new pack 
So that's why you need to stay in the hospital for those uh for those uh 24 days but it also di- we have different procedures yeah. there are others that will have the surgery and still go home mm-hmm. or maybe there's they're given something or something is inserted into the vagina and it is closed for some time then you go back to the store and then they 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 open and now remove the pack mm-hmm. so um mine was to 24 days so we stayed for 24 days they remove, they pack and pack and all that. And then now when you are done with that, remember the packing was being done by a doctor. By a doctor. Now when you come home, you, you have to go through what we call a dilation. Mm. Because remember you have not healed. You need, Completely. you need to heal and mm. you need also to keep the vagina, the created vaginal canal open. open. So yeah. that now you continue doing your dilate, your dilation. Maybe you can do once a week three three times a week depending sometimes it get, gets uncomfortable and that's what i was saying uh, you need to be ready it gets uncomfortable and also it gets uh draining it can drain you emotionally yeah. because at that point in time like i was saying it reminds you that yes. you have yeah. mrkh yeah. so that's why you need to have, have made peace with mrkh yeah, before yeah. even going for the surgery Wow. Yes. Um thank you for the information. Mm-hmm. Um when you when you have also after mm-hmm. you have your vagina created mm-hmm. and I'll come to um a question on medical health care mm-hmm. in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh when you when you have your vagina created mm-hmm. so um is such a woman mm-hmm. able to you know lubricate and mm-hmm. enjoy sex mm-hmm. you know the same way and uh Okay, let me say, uh, after surgery, what I can say is that you can comfortably be able to have sex. And as much as uh, we are talking about uh, the vaginal canal being able to lubricate its, itself, sometimes we can, you can get dry, dryness, mm-hmm. and that is where you will need the, now the, the lubricants that are used okay. during sex to okay. just, so that you avoid tearing yeah of the vaginal canal okay yes so you went for your procedure mm-hmm. in arusha mm-hmm. and you also mentioned that mm-hmm. uh for women who did not uh, develop their breasts mm-hmm. they they have um plastic surgery mm-hmm. um to have mm-hmm. breasts mm-hmm. so i'm wondering mm-hmm. um do we have really good health care mm-hmm. um provided mm-hmm. in kenya mm-hmm. as far as mrkh is concerned Okay. Um. I'm not. Uh, okay. We. What. What happens is uh, there is no much information about MRKH out there, and mostly you find also that some doctors don't have the information about MRKH, and very very few people do have that information. Okay. And also, uh, uh, in matters surgery, in matters um, breast. Uh, surgeries okay. that we have doctors who can do that in kenya mm. it's only that we got an opportunity in arusha okay. and even in arusha we had a doctor coming from outside to do the surgeries mm. so we did not have now the tanzanian doctors doing it even though they were helping out the other doctor during our our okay. surgeries okay. so it doesn't mean that you don't have doctors who can handle mrkh in kenya it's only that we got that opportunity okay yes um, yeah, so Julian, mm-hmm. um, I would want to know uh, in terms of healthcare costs. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, kuna diseases, uh, mm-hmm. especially this long term diseases mm-hmm. in Kenya mm-hmm. that have become so expensive, mm-hmm. and most people are not able mm-hmm. to really cater mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. their healthcare mm-hmm. needs. Mm-hmm. So, in terms of uh, provision of uh, healthcare services mm-hmm. for MRKH, mm-hmm. uh, uh, persons mm-hmm. or queens, mm-hmm. how is the situation in Kenya? Okay, um, personally, I might not have the information about payment, mm-hmm. but uh, somebody once mentioned to me, uh, she was told around 300,000 to 500,000, mm-hmm. and you can see that is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And also now the insurances, that is the NHIF and other insurances, they don't cover such a, such a surgery because it is referred to as a cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. So uh, you find out that people are not able to cater 
for the payment for such a uh, surgery mm. and let's say personally i was fortunate enough that doing it in arusha i did not pay a shilling for it so mm. i just had to take myself there and take myself back oh. yes okay okay um probably you're there and or you know someone and you might be thinking eh, probably this is this could be my issue only that i am yet to be diagnosed um what would be your message to such mm-hmm. people mtu mm-hmm. anajishuku mahali mm-hmm. ungemwambia afuate mm-hmm. nini gani mm-hmm. and once they confirm mm-hmm. or wa- if they are diagnosed mm-hmm. with amrkh mm-hmm. how can they reach you okay um it is important if you are just there and just thinking like i might have a marriage it is important you see a doctor for such confirmation because you might be saying you have a marriage yet you don't have a yeah. marriage mm. because we have different conditions am a different infertility condition so it is important you see a doctor and then you are be able you are able to be confirmed mm-hmm. kindly see a gyna and also be able to ask questions don't just get the results and go home mm-hmm. it is important you understand each and everything that pertains your health mm-hmm. and then something else is um it is also important uh, you are able to be patient be able to learn allow yourself to feel whatever you are feeling it is okay to feel that way mm. and then again uh when you find out you have a market i am everywhere on social media i am julian peter on facebook and i also have a page on facebook called julian mrk and in that page i speak about uh, self affirmation that you are enough and you are beautiful and you are wonderfully made and i also try to educate people about mrk and all that it entails mm. so you can reach me out on uh, you can reach me on julian mrk julian peter that is on facebook i am julian peter on instagram i am on tiktok uh, doing crazy things so i am just there julian mrk yes <laughs> so you can find me there wonderful <laughs> so yes. when when we uh, when such a person mm-hmm. reaches out to mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. you you have formed a group like mm-hmm. uh, of how many women or how uh, many queens the, so i, I uh, yes yes <laughs> that is the word so at least i believe i have around 45 ladies as of now yeah. and others in waiting mm-hmm. so when that person reaches me we are mm-hmm. able to connect them to the ladies who have a market mm-hmm. because as much as we all have a market we are also different mm-hmm. and we also have different experiences and that the, where there you can ask any question that you might feel like you need answers to i might not have all the answers yeah. but at least you can get answers there you can also get support because it is important that as much as you're walking this journey you walk the journey with someone who understands how it feels yeah. to have such a condition mm. yes wow wonderful and yeah. congratulations and thank you for the good work that you're doing and for coming out and creating awareness thank of, you so of much this condition that yeah. we really uh didn't know much about okay. and, until we met you mm-hmm. so finally i have loved guys go to her fb page follow her on uh social media handles um i have loved how you post as you think self affirmation yeah. messages and i think that is the message i would want us to mm-hmm. pass mm-hmm. to any mm-hmm. mrkh queen out there any person with disability mm-hmm. any woman mm-hmm. any man and everyone in the mm-hmm. society that mm-hmm. you are enough mm-hmm. um kindly pass that message because mm-hmm. i know you pass it very well mm-hmm. and just let people know that they are important that mm-hmm. they are valuable mm-hmm. and they are enough okay uh it is important as much as the society have a picture of what they expect of you as a person it is important you learn that you are enough you are beautiful you are wonderfully made and most of importance you deserve every beautiful thing that this world can offer yes
Wow. Wow. I hope you have heard it. Our viewers, we love you so much. We hope that this has been a blessing to you. Uh, God bless you. Remember to subscribe and share this video with your friends and with as many as possible so that we create awareness and pass the message out. Asante Nisana, till next time. Um, God bless you. God do you well. Today's shout out uh, goes to from, gra from grass to grace, Kate. Uh, Kate, thank you so much for the support you've offered so far. Natafazali utuambia jina ako. Tunajulizanga uyu ni nani? Ujitokeze. And the other shout out goes to Elizabeth Ndiran. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for the love. That is it from us today. Uh, thank you and kwaheri sana.